Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this beautiful field of bright yellow flowers um, against a grey stormy sky. The canola flowers are really spectacular and the real star of this show but the focal point is the small tree in the near distance just in front of the line of distant trees. So I'm hoping to accentuate that sense of distance uh, by using aerial perspective. Um, so I'm going to be trying to paint the field in slightly different shades and narrower bands the further back I get. So starting off with some really narrow bands in front of the distant trees and then becoming wider as I approach the mid-ground and more detailed as I approach the foreground. Also, to accentuate the sense of depth and distance, um, the canola flowers will become paler and slightly cooler the further back they go towards the distant field. And the tree that just stands out a little bit more prominently against the distant tree line will be the focal point, and that in itself will help to give us that extra sense of depth and distance. So the first thing to do is to sketch out and plan my different planes of land. On the page. I'm using a reference photograph from Pixabay and that will be available in my Patreon page for which there is um, a three-part tutorial there going into much more detail and depth. So first to paint in my grey sky um, I'm painting wet onto the dry page and this is a mixture of indigo Payne's grey and it's warmed up a little bit with some yellow ochre to give me this nice warm grey. I'm using horizontal brush strokes um, looking for a flat wash to really accentuate um, the yellow field um, with this rich deep grey colour of an oncoming rainstorm. And now going on to some perylene green and I'm putting in the distant tree line. I'm using a thicker richer mixture of paint so that it doesn't run too much onto the wet sky. I'm using Milford cold pressed 100% cotton watercolour paper. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees so gravity will help me paint. Um, it's 11 inches by 15 inches or about 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. This is a three quarter inch flat brush and it helps me to shape the distant tree line in a way that's not too detailed, that just suggests different heights and sizes of trees, um, but sort of all growing in a very sort of straight horizontal line as part of the distant field boundary. You can see I've just dabbed out the shape where my focal point tree is going to be. And now I'm beginning to put in my different sort of planes of land so I can get some sort of sense of depth and distance into my yellow canola field. This is lemon yellow. It's quite a cool yellow, sort of with almost hints of green to it. And I think it works really well. So here I've warmed it up with some cad yellow. I'm not going to paint right under my distant trees yet. I'm going to wait for that to dry completely because I don't want any sort of of the distant tree line running into my pale yellow field. So I'm leaving that gap and continuing down towards the foreground, um, varying up the shades of my lemon yellow with a little bit of cad yellow, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre until I come down towards the front. So I've got my distant planes of land all except for the very far distant ones, my mid-ground, which has got the slight uh, diagonal, which helps us to lead across the painting and up towards the focal point. And now here's my foreground. And with some perylene green mixed with a little bit of the yellow, I'm putting in some vertical brush strokes to begin to establish um, the front or leading edge of my field where you can see the canola plants growing upwards. So I'm putting in sort of this is going to start off the suggestion of stems, leaves and flowers. And then building up the darks um, with more Payne's grey and um, perylene green. 
adding some of the darks in to show the sort of height and the size of the of the crop of canola flowers. And then with some burnt umber, sweeping in a bit of colour and a bit of texture and tone into the earth at the field's edge at the bottom le left corner. Just about everything in this painting is done with my uh, one and a half inch Princeton Aqua Elite Mottler, which is a lovely synthetic brush, which is really versatile and I'm using it in place of a Harky brush here. Now scraping out with the corner of a plastic card, a few more vertical marks to suggest the stems of the canola flowers on the field edge. So that's the first layer finished. And once it's dry, then I can go in with a paler mixture of my lemon yellow and put in my distant um, part of the field in just narrow horizontal bands. I could bring it down over the paint that's already there and that'll act as a glaze, which will give me just some slight variation in tone there, which again, which will add a little bit more to the depth and detail. Now I'm going to start to build up the detail in the foreground. And for this, I'm using um, just an ordinary um, hog hair stippling brush that I found cheap on eBay. And so you can use any sort of um, tree and foliage brush or texture brush, anything that you can stipple with um, and just dip it in some dry paint. I'm starting off with lemon yellow, moving to cad yellow and I will also stipple on some of the lovely green colour, the green, which is perylene green mixed with a bit of the yellow, and then perylene green by itself to build up shadows and tones towards the front and leading back towards the mid-ground. This is going to look a little bit overt to start with, but we'll soften back with a glaze a little bit later to bring everything together. But for now, I'm looking for accentuating the texture in the front to suggest all those beautiful flowers. Now, with my small calligraphy brush and almost neat perylene green, I'm putting in my focal point tree, bringing it down just a little bit lower than the horizon line so that it looks as if it's um, quite a bit further forward and this is something that will really help to give us that sense of depth of this field. And then once I've got the tree shape right I'm going to accentuate some of the shadows in the trees, in the distant tree line, and this will just give me a little bit of variation. Also, the dark green will accentuate the focal point tree a little bit more because the eye is always drawn towards dark or light and detail. And this also adds some shadow and some variation into the distant tree line so that we've got the illusion of different sizes and shapes of trees growing across the back uh, without having to add too much detail. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed um, numbers on the tape on the right um, side. And that's part of the method that I use to explain creating um, depth and distance using different planes of land um, in the three-part Patreon um, in-depth demo. So if you're interested in that, follow the link below. A little bit more dark into the foreground, balancing the tones. And then when everything's completely dry, I'm going to glaze on a little bit of the lemon yellow with a tiny bit of... Um, green added. It's a very watery mixture and I'm just glazing over the top of the existing paint carefully without disturbing the paint underneath and this will smooth out um, the different planes of land but hopefully still keep the tonal variation and the variation in hues so that I get that sense of aerial perspective as things become paler the further back we go and brighter the further forward. 
and then just before things dry in the foreground etching through with the corner of a card again just to put in a few lighter um, highlights into the foreground to continue with the texture of the close-up canola flowers and then doing the same onto the ground onto the earth um, and I will go in with some shadows around those lighter highlights that I have pulled out there. Everything now needs to dry completely. And now for a few finishing touches, um, using the three quarter inch flat brush, I'm just going to um, add in a few final accents of colour and feather it through just to get those nice subtle textures in the distance and the mid ground. Not too much, keeping everything horizontal and that keeps the field nice and flat. And then dipping into some nice dark rich perylene green and putting in the final highlights. And these dark green, or sorry, low lights, these dark green low lights um, or, or dark accents really bring out the bright yellow in the foreground. And then the nice dark shadows um, into the earth at the very front of the painting. And then a little bit of green on the tips of my flat brush and just a tiny bit of shadow um, underneath that prominent focal point tree. And that's it, the painting's finished. And I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope you can see how using um, the different planes of land to start with and then blending colours together to make a sort of a more subtle gradations in the field creates aerial perspective, depth and distance. Um, and if we look a little bit closer, you can see that there's no real detail. But having that sort of um, mature tree in almost sort of in, not quite in the middle of the field, but standing in the middle of the field where the farmer is planted around, as they often do, really helps to give us that sense of depth and distance along with the paler paint and the narrower bands of um, planting the further back you go. Thanks so much for watching and thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel and don't forget to take a look at my Patreon group if you're interested in more in-depth tutorials um, at the moment we're dealing with depth and distance so thanks so much and i'll see you again soon and happy painting bye